we call our orchard the archaic orchard because uh, there was a Native American encampment here. Oh. And we found, these are all monos in the wall here. And some matate there on the, on the ground. and some pieces of matates. But this is what the Native Americans used to grind their grain and, and berries and, and uh, pinion nuts and such things. But you can see how they're polished on one. They're actually polished on both sides. Um, so uh, we thought we'd honor the, the place by trying to showcase the, the model. That's less than half of the, what we found, and we found them all right here. So Wow. <clears throat> how many acres is your farm? I'm guessing about two and a half. Yeah. Of which not all of it's in production just yet, but... Uh, um, and you have an overall bigger parcel, though? It's a 40-acre plot of land, yes. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's see, we can wander down through the what to do, I guess. Sure. Some wildflowers, huh? We planted wildflowers and clover when we first came. Um, just to improve the land, hold the ground down. This uh, soil is really... Look out, now that you're in the carrots. Nope. <laughs> um, the, the ground is subject to erosion because it's so sandy and wow. uh, so we tried to hold it down as much as we can with uh, cover crops. Um, here you've got a pear tree. That there is a, an Italian prune plum. You can see how many are on that branch right there. <laughs> How old are these trees? These will be eight years old this year. What year did they start, first start to produce? Um, last year was our first good crop. And here's some more pears. That's this whole row. We started planting in between the, the rows of trees. Started running out of ground. <laughs> Needed more productive ground, so we planted the parsley here, and then we interplanted the parsley with romaine and butter lettuce. This is a seckle pear, they call it. It's, they call it a dessert pear. Um, they're real small, sweet, and they store way into December. And you commercially sell your well, fruits? We, we sell to uh, individuals in town and uh, in Sawatch and then uh, elephant cloud carries our produce. So we plant uh, a lot of perennial um, plants, uh, medicinal type herbs. This is valerian right here. It's uh, a sleep aid that's used in a lot of teas. We bought this, it was all raw land, just gotcha. it looked just like the woods out there. And we've developed it all out of the, wow. from scratch. How many basically. years have you guys been here? So we bought the property in 1980 and then started developing the orchard eight years ago. Um, we, we picked this as a home site when we first bought the place, but we had no idea there was all this sandy ground out here. This is a patch of sand, but just doesn't exist almost anywhere else along the range. It's, uh, it's all solid rock pretty much everywhere else. So that might have been one of the reasons the Native Americans camped here. Um, but uh, so we've got the asparagus patch here. We've got some June berries and goji berries, um, hawthorn, all of which, hawthorn and sea buckthorn, which is all medicinal type stuff. This is the calendula that my wife uses in her uh, skincare products. And uh, then we've got phylanthes here, which is an immune system herb. Um, real super potent. Which one's phylanthes? The one, one with the little buttons, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. The calendula we just picked, so the new flowers will open here later today. This is the raspberry patch. We'll be picking more raspberries today. 
you can see we got some ripe ones on here. Wow. Do the bears like these? Well, the bears haven't got in through our fence yet, nice. but uh, so far we haven't had any bear pressure. Um, my buddy over in Delta has an orchard and he's growing some watermelons and he had a bear in his watermelons last night. Oh, wow. <laughs> sent yeah. me a picture of all these smashed watermelons. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and these are elderberries. These are mulberries, these two trees here. And most of this is apples down through here. Uh, are these all eight-year-old trees too? These are a little younger. Um, one or two years younger. So we grow a wide variety of vegetables. We try to grow a lot of different things um, rather than focusing on one commodity so that when we do a delivery people can buy a bunch of different type of things and make it worthwhile to take it into them. Um, when do you do your commodity uh, boxes? <clears throat> on Thursdays is when we do our distribution. I send out a, a list on Monday of what's available, and, and then we uh, do a distribution on Thursdays and Friday in Swatch. Awesome. And that's an edible crab. It's loaded. <clears throat> just as delicious as any apple in the orchard. These are our onions, yellow, red, and uh, torpedo. It looks like you got drip irrigation on all this, or no? Or no, this oh, is. We have some drip on the tomatoes down here, but this is set up where we can uh, either flood irrigate it or sprinkle it with a sprinkler. And it really helps with the slope for flood irrigation, with it running down a little bit. Well, we run down the hill with the main yep. lines, and then across the contour with our beds. And this is all garlic. Potatoes, of course. They like, like that sand, right? Yeah, they like sand. Well, particularly for harvest, so they don't get all beat up yeah. with the rocks. We just dug this garlic yesterday over in the shed. I'll show it to you. We've got a rototiller on my tractor, and we've got a hand rototiller. And then we do a lot of hand forking. Um, so yeah, this is the vegetable patch out here. We've got uh, all kinds of stuff growing. But uh, this is going into the salad mix today. And uh, he's picking uh, tot soy for our braising mix. And uh, we've got some spinach over there he'll be cutting later. Broccoli, romaine, butter lettuce, red romaine, two kinds of kale, red cabbage, chard, dandelion. Um, this is the strawberry patch here, but it's finished for the year. You might find one in there if you go looking. Uh, Seems like it came on early this year. Wow. And quit pretty quick. And this is all heirloom tomatoes. We've been doing heirloom tomatoes for three years now and having really good luck. I could never grow heirloom tomatoes in Swatch. But uh, they're doing great here as well as green chili. I'll show you the green chili patch. <clears throat> Dandelion. We got chard, dill, beets. This is a new patch of strawberries. New patch of raspberries. Oh. We're just planting some rhubarb and uh, horseradish right here. And then this whole area was just developed this year. We uh, cut the trees out in the winter, dug the stumps out as soon as the ground thawed, leveled it with my tractor, and then we planted another 20 fruit trees. And uh, this is the green chili right here. Wow. 
Do you ear get out of this pond at all or this little? Well, so this is a, a diversion and I can take the water down, water the strawberries and tomatoes and okay. all that stuff. How much rain do you think you get it here? Uh, oh, you're, you're 15 inches? About 10 to 12 inches per year. So a lot of that will come in the form of snowfall or heavy rain, rainstorms all at once. <laughs> wow. But so uh, OFIA restaurant uses our green chili. This is uh, different kinds of beans. We've got uh, French beans and green beans and Roma beans. And this is the uh, summer squash, the teeny yellow, cook neck, um, and then up there's uh, winter squash and melons. And this is a cover crop. It's peas and vetch and oats. I'll mow it and then turn it under to improve the soil. Oh wow. Is this kind of like a waffle bed type of technique where you just kind of use it where it's lower for the trees so they can kind of absorb Yeah, we make the... a well, what they call a well, tree well, so that we can fill that with water and it won't run off until it's clear full. And so I can bring the water down this ditch you see right here and I can run it into these. And I can run it into these. sweet cherry that's supposed to maybe make in our climate, which I'd never heard of, but we just found one. So we'll hope for the best. Cool. <laughs> you can see the water coming here. And so we can send it down to the next diversion point, or we can send it down through the top of the orchard here. And this is all San Isabel. Yep. We've got mud board here and warm wood. Uh, John's wart, comfrey. Patch of aspens that we planted, they're doing real well. This is our greenhouse. We uh, grow all the plants that we put out in the field in the spring, and then we move them all out, and then we plant in the ground. So, so these are cherry tomatoes, we've got cucumbers, some holy basil, um, some sweet peppers, some, some hot peppers. This is a cayenne right here. And then we grow sunflower sprouts for the restaurants and the stores. Um, those will be cut tomorrow and going out. And then we do basil for our food as our restaurant as well. Echinacea patch right here. This is a big patch of echinacea. We just transplanted. We had a patch of it down below the, near the strawberries and we broke it all up and moved them out and so we got a bunch here. We use that in our tincture blends as well. Um, and more calendula, more garlic, radishes. This used to be a patch of flowers last year for cut flowers, and so these are coming up from seed. Wow. They seed it up themselves. Some bee balm. Yeah, we got all kinds of stuff. I mean, this is a native plant for pestilence. This is a real nice specimen of a matate.
Yeah, this is the native pestilence here, the blue. They're so pretty, and the hummingbirds just love them. <laughs> That's Indian pamper. These are pie cherries. We'll be harvesting some more of these today. Wow. They are loaded. Yeah, man. <laughs> they look like it. Um, and this is Napa cabbage. This is where we wash and pack all our produce. We uh, rinse everything in, in fresh water with a little hydrogen peroxide. And then bring it in and bag it. And we make ice with the sun right here, which is pretty cool. And this is the garlic we just dug yesterday. Wow. Do you sell the scapes as well? Um, we've been planting them. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's been working out pretty well. This is my wife Lillian, um, she's been studying herbs um, for at least you know 50 years, and uh, developed her own line of herbal skincare um, and uh, internal um, herbal products and uh, they've become real popular. We have a website and we sell nationwide, even uh, to some other countries. And uh, Natural Grocers also picked up our line of um, calendula cream. And uh, so they buy that and ship it all over the region to their stores. And so that is also another source of, um, when people read our labels, they get on our website look at our other products. So it's been working out real well, keeping her busy. We'll eventually move our manufacturing to this building. Oh. It's set up for it, but uh, we're working out of our house right now. Um, so it's greenearthfarm.com and uh, you can see our product line there. <laughs>